friends. Welcome back to Calm in the Chaos Homeschool. So today I'm going to be giving you a look inside um, Critical Thinking Company's Reading Detective. And I have beginning A1, B1, and Rx. And so this pretty much covers this series. And this is something that my four kids are using this year. I have a fifth grader, sixth grader, seventh grader, and eighth grader. And between the four of them, we are using this book here beginning. So this is for grades three and four. This book here, A1, which is grades five and six. And this one here, B1, which is for eighth and ninth grade. We have not yet used this one, which is for six to 12th grade plus. So today I'm going to give you a look inside of each of these so you could see maybe what the levels look like and give you some reasons why you might want to consider using Reading Detective in your homeschool. Now before I get started, like I said, we are using these in our homeschool this year. We have been enjoying them. I did reach out to the Critical Thinking Company to see if they would gift me these so that I could give you a look inside some um, clean copies that my kids have not been writing in or we have pulled out the pages and things like that for their notebooks. And so these were sent to me for my honest review. And I'm just going to share with you how things have been going with these and why you may want to pick these up and let you know some of the benefits of using these. Additionally, I am planning on using some of these for my homeschool next year. So I'm going to be keeping three of these for myself. However, I am going to be gifting one of these to one of you, my subscribers. So I will let you know which one I'm going to be gifting and I will send it to you if you win. So in order to win, stick around and find out at the end of the video, I will explain how to win one of these for your own child or homeschool. Okay, so I'm going to start with the first one here. So this one is beginning grades three and four, and this is the one that my fifth and sixth grader are using this year. The reason why I decided to pick up Reading Detectives is my kids are pretty good at reading, but not great at test taking skills. So I wanted to get some more critical thinking and reading type books for them to maybe improve our test scores a little bit. Not that I think that test scores give a complete accurate picture of a child's learning, but it is some skills that you kind of need in this world so i was hoping to improve their test scores and i have not retested them so i can't give you our results or how much better my kids are doing on test taking but i'm pretty confident that this is going to help out so this says original fiction and non-fiction topics award-winning literature and a variety of genres and styles i'm probably going to take most of my time in this one just because this will give you the main layout that all of them are like, but then we will look at the other ones. So first of all, here's the table of contents. We have an introduction, we have some pre-tests, then they are focusing on different aspects of reading and different skills that you need when you're doing reading. So we have inference, vocabulary, story parts, main idea, theme, cause and effect, prediction, mixed skills, and then we have some post tests here. There's an answer key at the back, a glossary and literature citations. And also, I just want you to know here, there's two pre-tests. There are 52 lessons and then two post tests. So here is the teacher overview. It kind of goes over how to use this and just some things that the teacher might need to know. Over here, we have lesson and practice activity answers. This kind of goes over for the teacher, I would say, how this book works. I'll talk about that a bit more as we look through some of the readings. So it kind of talks about, it's just to the teacher, how this works. Now, if you do decide to do this with your child, I would suggest that you take a look at this and don't just go and assign the pretest and the lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, lesson four to them. Make sure that when you come to these introductions or beginning sections, that maybe you go through it with them. That is a mistake I made early on. 
So I really needed to assign a few of these pages and go over them with my boys, I think, to fully use this to the best ability. So actually, I, I did make a correction. I did stop that and figured this out with my boys. My girls, however, I had already planned stuff out, so it's a little harder for me to stop and go through this, but I wish I had taken a look at the book and made sure that I worked with my kids on these different sections. So first of all, we start with how to be a reading detective. They kind of go through the skills and you can have your child answer the questions as you go through this. And it kind of explains how they are going to be finding information for these stories. So then here's the pretest. They're not really different than the lessons in my opinion, but we have the name of the story. We have paragraphs, they have A, B, and C, because they're going to be asked some questions about where did you find information? So proving what your answer is. And then they have sentences are all numbered, so they can also use sentence numbers to prove where they found information. So here it says, circle the letter next to the correct answer or write the answer on the lines given. When asked, write the number of the sentence or letter of the paragraph that is the best evidence. So here it says, number one, in sentence three, what does the word freeze mean? So you would go and you would reread this, his eyes freeze on something. So become hard, stay still, become cold, pop out. So hmm, I guess stay still. B, which other sentence gives the best context clue? So then we would say, hmm, as he stares, the thing starts to move. Acting on instincts, he springs forward. So what does it mean? Acting on instincts, he springs forward. So he was staying still, maybe five. I would put a five there, telling me that he then moved. Okay, then according to paragraph A, what causes the kitten to jump? Well, his instinct. It says right here, what sentence is best evidence? Five. Okay, and so there are answer keys in the back. If you are unsure, that is very helpful. Sometimes I am not exactly sure which one they want. I do look at what my kids put in there and sometimes what they put in there does make sense. So I will just let them keep it correct, but that is helpful to have the answer key in the back here. So they go through and they ask questions and then they always want you to give the evidence. What paragraph gives the best evidence? What sentence gives the best evidence, etc. So they can't just guess, they have to actually find the information there. So that was the first pretest. And then this is the second pretest. Also about that same length. And then here's another place that I would stop and go through with my children. So we go through and we read about these things, drawing conclusions, inference and facts, examining the evidence, using your own knowledge. And then here's an activity to do with your child. And then here is story number one. So first story, and then it's just, generally the stories are one page and then one page for questions. So each story looks something like this. And so they'll go on like this for a while. They'll be all focusing on the kind of the theme or the type of skills that they're learning here. And they're excerpts from different books often. All right, so then here is where I would suggest you stop again. You make sure you go through with your child. So this is on defining vocabulary using context, and then there's a activity practice. And then you would go ahead and do a bunch of stories that focus on vocabulary in context. So that is what there looks like. And then let's see what this next. So then there's story parts, identifying story parts, so identifying story parts, plot, conflict, identifying setting, analyzing characters, and then story parts, practice activity. And so we do a lot of reading, I said, in our homeschool, but I don't really focus a whole lot on analyzing literature. So I think that this was a really good addition to cover those things that I don't feel like we do a lot of. And I feel like when my kids were taking their test at the end of last year, Maybe they didn't know some of these terms, so I'm hoping that doing this will help them with that. So identifying main idea and supporting details. Yeah, so that is what the third and fourth grade one looks like. So I'm gonna move into the fifth and sixth grade one, A1. So same thing here. And so here is the table of contents for this one. Teacher introduction, student skill lessons. So here they have all the skill lessons sort of at the front there. So that's a little bit different. Student enrichment, pretest. So there's two pretests. And then we have these different sections. So we have literature excerpts and activity pages, fictional short stories and activity pages, 
nonfiction articles and activity pages, and then post tests, answers, glossary, literature, citations. So as you can see, it's set up a little bit differently in this one. And so here's the teacher overview again, probably very similar. And here we have all the different skills that it is covering there as well. Okay. And then we talk about what is reading detective. And then here are the different things that I would suggest you go over with your child before giving them this book, just because if they don't read this, then they might not really understand what's going on in the book. And I did not do that. So, I wish I had slowed down a bit and looked at this before we started and spent some time going through this with my student. I don't think that they probably read it. So not the best way to start out. <laughs> Here's enrichment literature essay questions. So when they are doing some pieces of literature, you have some more questions you could ask if you would like, optional questions. And then here is the pretest. So pretest and the questions very much the same. They need to pick an answer and prove either by a paragraph or sentence number where they found that information. And that's, so the pretests are a bit longer. That's 10 questions there. And then here it is nine questions. And then we start with the literature excerpts. So each one is just one page here and one page of questions for this section here. So that is from different literature. And then we get to fiction, not sure how that's different, but maybe just shorter stories perhaps. So then this has fiction here. So a bunch of one page fiction and answers. And then we have nonfiction. So towards the end of that year or the end of this book, they are doing nonfiction reading. So it covers a variety of different things. Once again, the answers are in the back, so that is very helpful. And then I think it's just literature citations there. So there's a glossary of terms and literature citations. So one thing that as I'm going through these and I kind of have realized the difference between these two, this teaches all those parts, inference, generalizations, things like that. And that is what my boys are doing. My oldest daughter, who is doing this one this year, she really could benefit from this book just because it more specifically teaches these things. So honestly, I'm considering next year having her go back and doing these. This has been a bit of a struggle for her because reading comprehension is a challenge for her. So this would maybe boost her confidence, but also have her reviewing some of those really important parts of literature analysis and things like that. So that's the difference between those two books. Let's take a look at this one. So I have one child who is using this one this year. So this is for grades seven through eight. So let's see how that is set up differently here. So we have teacher introduction, student skills lessons, pretests, literature excerpts and activity pages, fictional short stories and activity pages, nonfiction articles and activity pages, and post tests, answers, glossary, literature citations. So this one is very similar to the five and sixth grade book that we just looked at. Once again, teacher overview. And then we have this here, what the scope and sequence for this book. I'll try to move that up so you can see. I want to pause, take a look. And then once again, my regret is I did not go through this with my kids at the beginning of the year because I just don't think they went through and probably read it all. So that is something that I wish I had gone through, maybe taken a few days to read these things. So let's just see what it covers here. Making inferences, inferences and facts, examining the evidence, using your own knowledge, making generalizations, generalizations, a good generalization, using figurative language, simile and metaphor, idiom, personification, analogy, using literary devices, flashback, foreshadowing, irony, symbolism, developing vocabulary using context, using context clues within the sentence, using context clues within the passage, determining fact versus opinion, fact or opinion, summarizing information. 
and so what a summary is. So then here are the pretests. So about nine questions for that pretest, and then one more. And then we go into the literature excerpts. Once again, it is one page of reading, one page of answers. And then they jump to fiction. So we've got some stories there. I believe these are more complete stories, I think, when they're here instead of literature excerpts. And then we go to nonfiction. All right, so that is what the seven, eighth grade one looks like. All right, so the last one here is the grades six through 12 plus Rx. Having known the Critical Thinking Company in the past, I've used them for word roots. My middle daughter used them for word roots, and I would definitely go ahead and use some lower grades, even if your kids are in six, seven, eight. I'd probably start with lower levels because they do get quite challenging towards the end so don't feel like you have to stick to those grades as you can see with the other books i used i definitely took a step back this has a few different things here on the sides it says test prep for secondary students original fiction and non-fiction titles award-winning literature and a variety of genres and styles so we are getting ready for tests at this point so we have introduction pre-tests so we have, I don't know, there's looks like maybe three pretests here, I'm not sure. Unit one, main idea and supporting details. Unit two, conclusions and inferences. Unit three, story elements. Unit four, literary devices. Unit five, theme. Unit six, vocabulary. Unit seven, figurative language. Unit eight, cause and effect. Unit nine, prediction. Unit 10, fact and opinion. Unit 11, mixed skills, and then we have post-tests. So this one has 44 lessons, including two pre-tests and two post-tests. I would say they run in about the 50, 50 lessons and then add the post-test and the pre-tests. So we generally do this twice a week and we should be able to finish this without too much problem. All right, so we have the teacher overview here again. We have the scope and sequence, looks a little shorter. And then how to be a reading detective. Once again, I would probably go through this with your child before you got them started. And then here is their pretest. And I like how they go back to just um, teaching those specific skills again in the last part. So another pretest here. And then here we go, identifying main idea in support of sentences or details main idea in support of details, how to organize it, another activity here, and then we're in to the readings here. So we have many different units here. So the readings, we go from main idea, conclusion, inference, things like that, and we just go through all those different units. So I like how that is organized. We are not too far, it looks like, and then we hit so this one, it is, it's about the same, there's not quite as many stories, 44 stories. And then here is all of the answer key towards the end. The Critical Thinking Company does have a variety of different types of books. We've used Word Roots. We did enjoy that. Um, this is the other one we've been using. We haven't really used, I think we had a little bit of that at the beginning of our homeschool. We've done some mind benders. Uh, we haven't really done any of these other ones, but they have a lot of different different books that you can check out. They're all very high quality. Definitely check them out. They do have a lot of sales throughout the year, so you might want to get on their mailing list if you are interested in these, these ones here. Uh, I will link in the description box below a link to their site so you can take a look at what they have and get on their mailing list if you want to get some sales throughout the year. So we're at the end here. I'm going to let you know which of these I plan on doing as my giveaway. So I decided that I will be using some of these next year. And this one is the one that I will be giving away to whoever wins this. It is the grade seven to eight. So hopefully you have an older student or one coming up. 
to this. So maybe if you even have a high schooler and you want to start getting ready for some more high school stuff, and before you go ahead and use this one, you might want this one, or you just have a middle schooler who has some pretty good skills that you want to practice up and get them a few more literary analysis skills. So in order to enter to win this, I would like for you, please do give my video a like. I would really appreciate it if you did that. If you like videos like this, don't forget to subscribe so that you can see my future videos. But in order to win this, I would like for you to comment below the ages of the kids that you are currently homeschooling. I would love to hear that. And if you wanna make sure I see it, uh, just say I'm interested in getting entered to win this. Another way to win a second entry would be to go on my Instagram page and comment under my post talking about this video, comment under my post, the ages of your kids, and you will be entered to win another time. And a third way to be entered to win is to join my Facebook group and comment under my post about this video as well, the ages of your kids, and that you would be interested in winning this copy. So three ways to win. You can have up to three entries. I will be using a random name draw thing to choose my winner exactly one week from when this video goes out. So you can look at the uploading day of this video, and one week from then, I will be choosing my winner. So. Let me know in the comments below if you are interested in winning. How old are your kids? Thank you so much for coming today. I hope this was a good overview to let you know if Reading Detective might be something you would like to use in your homeschool. It has been working well for us and I plan on using it again next year. So thanks for coming today and I hope to see you all in my next videos. Bye everyone.